Greetings, brothers and sisters in Christ. I wish you all a very happy new year. I pray that this year the desire in our hearts should be to bring us closer to God. I will be sharing with you today the offering message. God created everything to be in a cycle. He created the grass to feed the animals and the animals to feed us and in return we feed and plow the ground. The title of my message is Feed What Feeds You. How can you be eating in the house of God but sowing or feeding the casino? You cannot sow disrespect and expect to receive honor. You cannot sow greed and expect to receive prosperity. The Bible says, Whatsoever a man sows, that is what he shall reap. If you go to a restaurant and you eat in the restaurant, after you eat, you have to pay. So you have to give so that you will be given unto. If you invest in livestock, for the livestock to give back to you, you need to feed the thing that feeds you. So are we taking care of the thing that's taking care of us? You are teaching your children by how you are teaching your children to treat you how you are treating your parents. We cannot come to the house of the Lord once and expect to be fed. It is how you take care of your relationship with God that determines how you will be fed. How you feed your relationship with God is how you will be fed. You need to continually feed your relationship with God in order for it to feed you. The measure in which you feed your relationship with God is the measure that it will be fed unto you. So I leave you with this question. What are the areas in your life that you are underfunding and overexpecting? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you have provided us with. Father God, help us God, to give back to you in the same measure that you give to us. Lord, we thank you for this year that you have provided us with. We thank you, O oh God, that we have come out of it, Lord, alive and well. We thank you for all that you have given us, O oh Father God. Lord God, we just pray, O oh Lord, that we may be able to give unto your house and take care of your house just as you take care of us and just as your house takes care of us. Lord, help us to feed your house just as your house feeds us. Lord, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor for there is none like you. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, good morning, praise God. Welcome to our broadcast this morning. My name is Pastor Ricardo from FCI Rayma Family Church here in Northern Natal, South Africa. Praise God. Thank you so much for joining us. I want to encourage you this morning to get your pen, get a notebook and get your Bible ready as we share the Word of God together this morning. Praise God. If we can just close our eyes and we open up this morning in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for yet another glorious and wonderful opportunity, O oh God, to share your word. We thank you, Lord, O oh God, that as we hear your word, that faith comes in the name of Jesus. I thank you for every person, O oh Lord God, that is connected with us this morning. I pray that your blessing shall be upon them. I pray, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, as your word is shared this morning, Lord, that it will come forth with clarity and with power, Lord, and I thank you that the seed of your word will, Lord God, be planted on the fertile ground of our hearts this morning. I thank you in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord, that where two or more are gathered, there you are in their midst. And we acknowledge your presence here this morning. We give you first place in our lives. We give you first place, oh, Lord God, in our homes and in our families. And we thank you this morning that we have your word the blessed assurance of your word and the promises that you've given unto us in your word are true 
For in Christ Jesus, Lord, your word is yea and it is amen, so be it. So we thank you this morning, O God, and we receive with meekness the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. In Jesus' blessed name, and the people of God said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Well, praise God. Welcome once again. Um, <clears throat> I want to encourage you to make some notes as we share the word this morning. And this morning, I'd like you to go with me to the book of Psalms and the 37th chapter. And I want to talk to you this morning about the four, the four keys to overcoming challenges. Four keys to overcoming challenges. And we find in Psalm 37, a Psalm of David. And I'm going to read from verse number 3 through to verse number 7, and then we'll break it up. But David writes, he says, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on His faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light, and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret because of Him who prospers in His way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Hallelujah. Now, friends, this morning, I want to just share something with you. Our lives, in life, you will face challenges. That is a guarantee and that is a fact. It's a fact of life that you will encounter challenges. You will encounter um, difficulties. But the important thing is that when the challenges come your way, your response is everything. Now, David gave us in this particular psalm that I've shared with you, he's given us four keys to overcoming challenges and overcoming opposition. Because you must understand, in the pursuit of your God-given destiny, you will face adversity. You will face opposition. But the important thing is to not sell yourself out or not sell yourself short of the promises of God. We find in verse number 3, David says, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. In other words, have complete confidence in God. It's okay to have problems. It's okay to have challenges because they will come. But the important thing is never allow the problem or the challenge to have you. You are the one that are that is in control of that problem. You must be in control. So don't allow the problem or the challenge rather to, to grab a hold of you. You grab a hold of it and you master it. And how do you do it? It's by trusting in the Lord. David said, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on His promises. I'm reminded of the account that Jesus gave of the two men. The one man was wise and built his house upon the rock. And the other man was foolish and he built his house upon the sand. We find Jesus says that the winds came and they blew up. They blew against the house. And he says, the house that was founded on the rock, it stood it stood firm. It was steadfast. But the house that was built upon the sand, that house was washed away. Friends, the Word of God is our foundation. The Word of God is our life. When David says, dwell in the land, in other words, he's encouraging us to dwell in the promises of God. The Word of God, if I can share with you from 2 Peter chapter number 1 and verse number 3. Let me start from verse 2. He says, Grace and peace 
be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things. His divine power, the divine power of God, has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. I want you to highlight this now, verse 4. By which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these, through these promises, you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. In other words, get your mind fixed on the Word of God. Get your heart established in the Word of God. The Bible says we have received precious promises. So friends, let me share with you this. There is no problem that is bigger than God. You must acknowledge that. That God is bigger than anything that you could ever face in your life. Always remind yourself that. God is bigger than the problems you face. God is bigger than the challenges that come your way. And He's given unto you precious promises. David says, dwell in the land and feed on His faithfulness. When you feed on the Word of God from Genesis to Revelation, one thing is very evident, that God is a faithful God. Everything that God has promised you, it will come to pass. Hallelujah. Every promise that God has given you, it will come to pass. We see the faithfulness of God in the life of Abraham. We see the faithfulness of God in the life of Isaac, in the life of Jacob. We see the faithfulness of God in the life of Naomi, of Ruth, of all the patriarchs of old. God has shown himself faithful and he's the same God yesterday, today and forever. So he says, dwell in the land. So dwell in the word of God. So key number one to overcoming challenges, number one is to trust in the Lord. Never believe that a problem is your problem. Don't take ownership of that problem. That problem is not your problem. When you walk with God, the problem is His, not yours. Hallelujah. He goes on to say in verse 2, He says, Delight yourself also in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. Hallelujah. What David is saying is that you should relax as a baby would relax in the arms of its mother. You should relax and you should delight yourself and focus on the relationship that you have with God as your heavenly father. Focus on that relationship that you have with God. In other words, you can pray and He hears you. He call when you call, He hears you and He answers you. He's a prayer answering God. Understand that when you come to Him in faith, He is a God who exists. So when you come to Him in faith, you receive the petitions that you have, the requests that you, that you make of Him. So focus on your relationship with God as your Heavenly Father and don't allow the enemy for one second to steal the joy you have. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. Hallelujah. So don't let the enemy steal your joy. And don't let him steal your sense that all is well. I'm reminded of the woman who lost her child. And she came to the man of God. And as she was coming, the man of God sent his servant to go and ask, How is it with this woman? Now this woman had just lost her baby. And when the servant asked her, How is, how is she? She says, It is well. 
it is well. It is well. She had a mind focused on the fact that the same God who gave me this baby is the same God who will give him back to me again. And that is exactly what was in Abraham's mind when God promised him a son, Isaac. And he went up and God called him and said, go and offer up your son, Isaac. Offer him up as a sacrifice. Abraham understood that the same God who promised me a child, the same God who gave me a child, is the same God who's going to give me back my son. Hallelujah. And that's the thing. God is a faithful God. Amen. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. That's key number two, is to delight yourself in the Lord. Don't let anything steal your joy. It may be that you're in a midnight hour, but you don't, don't give up, don't give in, and don't have a pity party. Become a Paul and Silas, and praise your way out at midnight. The Bible says at midnight, Paul and Silas, they were praising God. They were singing hymns unto God. And all those in the prison were watching them and listening to them. And all of a sudden, the prison doors opened. So that's the thing. You've got to delight yourself in God. The Bible says the Lord inhabits the praises of His people. Praise Him continually. Hallelujah. Key number three. He says, commit your way to the Lord. To commit means to roll the weight of something from off your shoulders and place them on the shoulders of another. We read in um, 1 Peter 5. 1 Peter 5. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 1 Peter chapter number 5 and I'm going to read verse from verse 6. He says, Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that He may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon Him, for He cares for you. You see that? Casting all your cares upon Him, for He cares for you. You must know that. You must believe that with all of your heart. That God cares for you. God loves you. He proved it on the cross. He sent Jesus Christ, His Son, to pay a price on your behalf. He cares for you. He cares about every minute detail of your life. And David says, Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. So in other words, don't take the problem and want to carry it on your shoulders. Roll them over. Roll the weight over. And give them to God. As I said to you earlier on. The problem is not your problem. It's God's problem. The thing is. When you cast your care upon Him. You are giving Him that situation. You are giving Him that circumstance. You are giving Him that challenge. Hallelujah. And that is. Is similar to when David was faced with Goliath. He placed Goliath in God's hands. He wasn't a David case. He was a God case. And God used David to demonstrate his power. And from Genesis to Revelation, I just shared with you, we see the faithfulness of God. The Bible says we have received exceedingly great and precious promises. And we have the power of God at our disposal. That means that God takes care of you 24-7. From sun up to sun down, God is in control. From sun up to sun down, God is watching over you. And God will not allow anything to happen to you to harm you. God is still on the throne, regardless of what circumstances may portray regardless of what your ears may be hearing or what your eyes may be seeing. Go to the Word of God and see what God says about that problem. And you stay rooted in the Word and you hold on to the Word because God is bigger than your problem. Hallelujah. Then 
he says, He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Key number four, rest in the Lord. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Rest in the Lord. In other words, don't take matters into your own hand and become a Mr. Fix-It or Miss Fix-It. Give it to God. Let God take control over the situation. Let God deal with it. You just rest patiently and wait on the Lord. Look at Jesus in the account where they were at sea. And all of a sudden, a storm arose at sea. The Bible says the disciples were in panic because they were considering the waves and considering the storms. But Jesus was asleep. He was resting in the Father. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And he showed us the most perfect example to rest and have confidence in our Heavenly Father. God is with you and God is for you and God will come through for you regardless of the circumstances or the challenges that you face. Consider the man Samson. After his strength was taken from him and his eyes had been taken up and he could not see and how they made fun of him the Philistines made fun of him and he called unto God and God answered him. Now this is what I want to get across to you this morning. Is that it doesn't matter what your setback is. With God, you'll always make a triumphant comeback. With God, there's always an opportunity for a comeback. Yes, you may be progressing through life. You may There may be challenges. There may be obstacles. But the most important thing is that in spite of those circumstances, in spite of those setbacks, that those are always begin to look at them as opportunities for God to cause you to make a triumphant comeback. I believe that as you trust in the Lord, as you delight yourself in Him, as you commit your way to Him, and as you trust in Him, He'll bring it to pass. The Lord will never leave you, nor will He forsake you. You can certainly have confidence in God and you can certainly trust in the Lord to come through for you. And I believe that in this hour, no matter what you're going through, friend, I want to encourage you this morning that we serve a miracle working God. We serve a God of power and God is with you and he'll demonstrate his power in your life. Very often, when we get to the Red Sea, many people don't like to be in that situation where you're faced with adversity because it seems too great. But those are opportunities for God to demonstrate His power, for God to demonstrate who He is and who He's made you to be in Christ Jesus, His Son. Hallelujah. So from today, beginning today, I want to encourage you to give everything over to God to trust in Him. And just like that little baby in its mother's arms, just relaxes. You relax in the promises of God. You relax in the strength of God. You relax in the power of God, knowing that with God, all things are possible. And I believe that this will be a season for the possible for you, because you serve a God of the possible. All you need to do is just believe. The key is believing. And believing is receiving. So that's my word to you this morning, is to trust in God. And I believe that no matter what circumstance you are faced with this morning, no matter what challenge you are faced with this morning, you're going to overcome it. Because God has given you the ability to overcome it. You can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. Amen. Praise God. Well, that's my message to you this morning. And I trust and I believe that you've been blessed this morning. Now, if you don't know the Lord Jesus, or you've probably, you knew the Lord, and you drifted away, and you want to make things right with God, God is not angry with you. God actually, He eagerly waits for your invitation. He awaits your invitation. Wouldn't you invite Him into your life this morning? It's very simple. All you need to do 
He said the simple prayer of faith with me as we pray this morning. If that's you, I want you to pray with me this morning. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. According to your word, if I shall confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe with all of my heart that God raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying for me. I receive right now your free gift of eternal life. I thank you that from this moment on, all my sins are washed away. I am a new creation in you, Lord Jesus. I acknowledge you as my personal Lord and Savior, and I thank you now that I am a child of the Most High God. In Jesus' wonderful name. And we said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Well, praise God. If you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of God. Um, I want to encourage you to get connected to a church in your local area. Get connected to a local church where you can grow your newfound faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And if you've prayed that prayer and you've been blessed by this broadcast this morning, the details are appearing on the screen. I want invite, to, invite you to connect with us join, us, join us. The details are on the screen. Send us a WhatsApp, send us a text, send us an email. We love to hear from you. And even if it's a prayer request, send your prayer request. We pray for you often. We thank God for you and we love you very much. Until next time, this is Pastor Ricardo saying, God bless you. We love you very, very much. And we pray for you. Before I close, stretch your hands towards the screen as we just release the final blessing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you both now and forevermore in Jesus' wonderful name. And the people of God said, Amen, amen, and amen. Well, praise God. Until next time, this is Pastor Ricardo saying God bless you. Love you very much. Goodbye.